Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to this Outbreak Newscast. And on today's show, I want to take a look at some news concerning the gastrointestinal virus, norovirus. And let's start in South Korea. Health officials in Namwon City, located in southwestern South Korea, have reported more than 1,000 cases of the gastrointestinal illness linked to kimchi. The tainted kimchi was distributed through school meals, leading to numerous students and staff from 24 different schools reporting symptoms of vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Now, kimchi is a traditional Korean side dish consisting of salted or fermented vegetables, most often cabbage or radish. Now, norovirus has been detected in patients, it's been detected in environmental samples, and in some of the kimchi that was delivered directly to the schools. The Disaster and Safety Department of Namwon City has put together a temporary halt on the production and distribution of all items from the kimchi producing company. Additionally, the company is taking steps to voluntarily withdraw food products that have already been distributed, so to recall these food products. So how would kimchi get contaminated? Well, kimchi contamination can occur during preparation if the infected person handles the ingredients without proper hand washing. The virus can also spread through the contaminated water that's used to wash vegetables or during fermentation. Since kimchi is typically consumed raw, any norovirus present won't be killed during the cooking, increasing the risk of the infection. Well, let's go ahead and take a look over to another part of the world, Italy, where another large outbreak has occurred. In reports, note that there was a norovirus outbreak that hit the village of Torre del Bonico on the shores of Lake Garda, Italy last week. More than 300 people have sought medical treatment for the highly contagious stomach bug. The rapid spread of the illness led to an immediate investigation by health authorities who confirmed the presence of the highly contagious norovirus in stool samples of affected individuals. Now, it's not clear yet what caused the sudden norovirus outbreak, but local health experts suspect the local water supply. This has prompted authorities to issue warnings for people in the area not to drink the tap water. Now, according to some local Italian newspapers, they said the outbreak was likely due to an overload of the sewage system due to unusually high water levels in Lake Garda after some heavy rains in recent weeks. Local authorities are investigating the potential causes and have added chlorine to the water network to disinfect the local water supply. And lastly, I want to take a look at some it's actually disappointing news from the Boston-based biopharmaceutical company, Hillivax. The company announced earlier this week it is ending development of its norovirus vaccine for infants after its latest trial of the shot missed its primary and secondary efficacy endpoints. They said this week that the phase 2B clinical trial of HIL-214 in infants did not demonstrate efficacy against moderate or severe acute gastroenteritis events due to two different norovirus genotypes. No clinical benefit was observed across secondary endpoints, the company said. Quote, we are disappointed that the NEST IN1 study did not meet primary efficacy endpoint, said Rob Hirschberg, MD, the chairman and CEO of Hillivax. While the HIL-214 previously showed clinical benefit in adults, the NEST IN1 was the first efficacy study conducted on infants for a norovirus vaccine candidate. We believe the efficacy in the infant setting may have been impacted by the appearance of multiple emerging strains in this trial. Now, norovirus is primarily spread person to person through the fecal oral route, meaning it's transmitted by ingesting tiny particles of infected fecal matter or vomit. Now, this can happen through direct contact with an infected individual, consuming contaminated food or water, or touching contaminated surfaces and then touching your mouth. The virus is also remarkably resilient and can survive on surfaces for days, 
making it easy to spread in places like unsanitary food preparation settings. Contaminated foods like leafy vegetables and shellfish are commonly associated with foodborne norovirus outbreaks. Now, it's unusual for norovirus to cause serious symptoms. Infection is usually short-lived, with symptoms appearing after a day or two. However, dehydration can be a risk factor, especially in children, the elderly, and those with other health problems or weakened immune systems. There is no treatment for norovirus, so the best thing you can do is let the virus run its course and, importantly, try to prevent people around you from getting ill. Symptoms like severe dehydration, persistent vomiting, and diarrhea, or symptoms lasting more than a few days may require medical attention. Now, exposure to as little as 20 norovirus particles can cause an infection, meaning even the slightest trace of contaminated matter can cause illness and spread quickly. Uh, You can prevent this by strict hygienic practices. And this this is a list of some things that can be due. These are some key measures. One, of course, is hand hygiene. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water, especially after using the toilet and before eating or preparing food. Now, alcohol-based hand sanitizers are less effective against norovirus. Food safety. Ensure food is properly cooked and avoid consuming raw or undercooked shellfish, which can be a source of the virus. Clean and disinfect surfaces regularly, especially in communal areas. Use bleach-based cleaners as norovirus is resistant to many other disinfectants. And isolation. If you or a family member are infected, avoid contact with others as much as possible until 48 hours after symptoms subside. Now, globally, norovirus is estimated to result in approximately 700 million cases of acute gastroenteritis and 200,000 deaths per year. The burden of norovirus falls disproportionately on young children and older adults. Thanks for listening.